everybody out there. Welcome to the stream. And I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Friday. Thank you, Sean. Hey, Brian, how you doing on this fabulous Friday? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Kiss your wind goodbye. <laughs> Somebody saw the new video today. You thought it was hilarious? Thank you, thank you. And a wheel spin. You got it. Glad to see y'all were enjoying the parody and we're starting off with a dance break. Okay. Oh, there was a little bit of lag. It's looking good now. So I, whatever that lag was, I think it is gone. It was a clever parody of Over the Rainbow, that's for sure. Well, thank you. I tried that. Thank you, Mr. Art Rules. Uh, nearly everybody gets Twitter painted in the springtime. For example, you're walking alone, mind your own business, and your knees get weak in the knees. The, oh, nearly everyone gets Twitter painted in the springtime. For example, you're walking along. Mind in your own business. You get weak in the knees. Your head gets in a whirl. And then your Twitter painted. <laughs> I gotcha. All right. So, what should we draw today, you guys? I'm feeling something prehistoric. I'm feeling like either some ancient mammal or some dinosaur or something like that. I don't know. What what are y'all thinking? Y'all thinking something like that? Or if y'all if you are thinking that way with me, tell me what some ideas here. We're thinking like a big old sauropod, thinking about like a theropod, maybe ceratopsian, stegosaurid, an ankylosaurid, or if we're going prehistoric, we're doing like uh, maybe an endricotheer. Sorry, I'm being a nerd. <laughs> All right. I I'm, I'm actually the more I talk about it, the more I'm leaning on woolly mammoth. Y'all up for a mammoth today? I know. I have not drawn an elephant anything. I haven't drawn an elephant anything in a while. So it would be nice to bring some pachyderm love back to my life. Uh, ooh, or Styracosaurus specifically. Ultimate Neek was that. Ooh, Styracosaurus could be fun. I have not. I don't think I've done a Styracosaurus in a while. So let's see here. We could do that. I'm going to go I'm going to go with Styracosaurus. You know what? Let's do Styracosaurus. I like that. I don't know why, but hearing Styracosaurus just it, it felt right. It felt right to me. So that's what we're going to do. And yes, I see <laughs> I see the comments. People are wanting to know. Oh wait, why are you black? You're supposed to be blue. Um yes, I've seen the comments not only just here but on my Twitter also, people want to know, today was the day Little Mermaid came out. Have I seen it yet? And the answer is, yes, I did. I grabbed myself a ticket last night, and I saw it. So, while we're getting started, just kind of getting the rough shape of the Styracosaurus's body... And kind of like where the head is going to be and everything. We can sure talk about that. Oh, what am I drawing and what program is it? So I am drawing on my iPad. And I'm using a program uh, called Procreate. It is one of the best drawing programs I've ever had. I don't use Photoshop anymore. It just does everything I want. It's so intuitive. I don't like to draw with anything else now. So I've hooked up my iPad and everything using the app of procreate um yes so <laughs> i know everyone now is like we need to know about the little mermaid where do you stand brian what's going on and i will say this as someone who is 
so tired of the live action remakes and I want them done and I don't want any more made. It wasn't awful, but I'm not going to say it was great either. It, uh, it surprised me in a few ways. There were a few things that happened. I'm not going to go into crazy details or spoilers here. Um, there were a few things that happened where I was, uh, genuinely surprised. Like, wow, not only was that a good choice, but that was a great choice. And I'm so glad y'all did that. Then two seconds later, oh my gosh, why did y'all do that? That hurt so much. Why? And there was a, when the film is great, uh, when the film is good, it's awesome. When the film is bad, it hurts, y'all. <laughs> At least that's my opinion. So I definitely wouldn't say it's the worst of them. In fact, I'd say it's higher to the top or more mid. I definitely can't say it was amazing. I can't say it was great. I can't say the entire thing as a whole was spectacular. But there were some moments that I really enjoyed and I really appreciated. And other moments that my eyes can never unsee. And I'm very sad about that. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy to go into more detail <laughs> in that. Uh, again, so it's average. Mm, it, it feels weird to say that because like I said when it's good it's great and those few great moments I gotta say oh okay um, why did you just disconnect okay okay that was weird um that was weird. Um, but yeah, so all of that, uh, yeah, all that to say, when it's good, it's great. But yeah, when it's bad, it hurts, y'all. And I'm tempted to say that, you know, the great parts are so worth all the crap that you have to sit through. But part of me doesn't know. I will say this. I don't regret seeing it in theaters. I don't. In fact, I'm glad I saw it in theaters. Um... Am I going to watch it again in theaters? No. When it's back on Disney Plus, maybe. And then I'll fast forward through all the stuff that I thought was terrible. So far, it looks like a pillow with scribbles. Well, that's uh, that's how a lot of drawings start. That's how a lot of them start. See, I'm thinking he'll have a pretty big frill with two nice, really big um, points up at the top. And... Uh, It'll be a relatively realistic Styracosaurus. But yeah, nothing too crazy. So, um, so yeah. That's where I stand on it. If, uh, if that affects your opinion at all, there you go. Like, I will say this. I felt like most of the human characters, or human-esque characters, did pretty well. I will say this, they tried so hard, they tried so hard to make Prince Eric not just this name, this, this, you know, random prince like he was in the first movie that basically had no personality and is there just to kind of forward the plot. They tried so hard, and I'm going to be honest, it did not work. It did not work. He's still just a... He still feels bland and has no personality, which is sad because they gave him like eight times the screen time and he still feels like he has no personality. Um, King Triton at first, I was like, wow, Javier Bardem, come on, you can do more than that. And even then, I don't really blame you. I blame like your direction and stuff. It just feels like y'all are doing the bare minimum because you can and you know you can get away with it, which, yeah, I mean, so far you've been able to do that. I get it. Just phone it in. But I will say this. By the end of the movie, I felt him a lot more. So I was like, okay, all right. I got that. I got that. Um. Yeah, so now we can start working on a more dedicated outline. Um. Yeah, and of course, um, I've said this before, and I stand by it. I think that... Um, Halle Bailey as Ariel was actually a really good choice. And now that I've actually seen it, yeah, she was a good choice. 
Uh, Ezra, thank you for subscribing. I, I, I think she was a good choice. Um, I have very few issues with her as Ariel. Like, there's just a couple things that I wanted. But overall, I was very happy with it. Her singing voice is just ugh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I could listen to her sing for hours. Like, yeah. She had a few weird acting, uh, weird acting things. Like, I could tell. Ooh, that was weird. Like, I can tell what she's trying to do. And she's trying to bring a little more acting into her singing. Trying to go a little more musical theater. But, yeah. I don't know if they all worked. I can see what she was trying for, but it felt really forced in the moment. But I'm like, you know what? Her singing voice as a whole is so good. I can look past that. Sadly, the thing that hurt me the most and the part that I was like, please, I never want to see this again, is almost every time Sebastian was on screen, which makes me sad because Sebastian, he was my, uh, he is my favorite character of the original movie. And I felt like he was such a catalyst to make the movie happen. And then they just, they, they butchered him. And I don't want to put like all the blame on David Diggs because David Diggs is a great actor. He is a great singer. He was amazing in Hamilton. Um, he was amazing in Hamilton. And, uh, oh, thank you, Miss Art Rules. Put a flower in his mouth. I don't know, maybe. Maybe I'll put some flowers, like, next to him. Like, he's about to graze on him or something. Um, so you fairly enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, oh. Miss Art Rolls said hello to a friend. I apologize. That's right, you did do one earlier. I apologize. Um, I fairly enjoyed it. I walked away with more, uh, positive feelings than negative. But, overall, I, I still can't say it was a great movie or i'm like oh you gotta go see it i'm like i don't know if i can say that basically here's what it boils down to if you have enjoyed the live action remakes thus far and you want more of them you will be happy with this and i think you're going to get exactly what you're looking for if you're tired of them and you don't want any more if you're if your relatives want to go or your friends want to go it's not gonna be awful it's not pinocchio levels or anything like that but it is just, there is a slog to get through a bunch of crud. But you do get rewarded with some good parts. You do get rewarded with some good parts. Uh, I saw somebody earlier asking about Melissa McCarthy as Ursula. I'm going to be honest. She was one of my favorite parts. She was just, she felt like she was really just trying to eat up every second of screen time she had. And I loved that. Um... Other than that, Flounder, I, I, I gotta be real here. Flounder was just meh. I don't think he was done poorly. I don't think he was done great. He is extremely forgettable. But if I could be so bold, I love Flounder in the original movie. But let's be real here. You wrote him out of, if you write him out of the story, he doesn't really serve a point anymore. He's not really a big character and he doesn't really serve a big purpose. But he is cute. And he sells plush toys. So his cuteness is at least fun to watch. He's not cute anymore. So he lost the little appeal that he <laughs> had. Um, and yeah, all of his lines just feel regurgitated. I don't think they gave him one new line that wasn't from the movie, the original film. And if they did, it was just like a throwaway like, oh no, what do we do? Stuff like that. He had almost no other original thoughts in his head. <laughs> Flounder was mid. Yeah, I agree. I agree. He wasn't terrible. He was just there. And then Aquafina was a mixed bag. When she was having to say the uh, Buddy Hackett lines verbatim, oh, you could tell she was not in it. You could tell she's just like, Okay, I'm doing this because it was in the first movie, and I feel like I have to. But then when they let her be herself for a second, she gets a few of her own lines in there. She's great! And I'm like, y'all, let your actors be actors. Not just, don't make them be parrots for the past. And that's, Disney has a hard time with that, which is such a pain. Because you get these great actors, and then you don't let them act. 
You make them act like somebody else, which that's not their kind of acting. That's my kind of acting. That's what actors like me, that's our job. We're sound alikes. We're, that's what we do. That's not what they do. They try to make original performances. I try to do that too, but let's be real here. I get hired more to do sound alikes and stuff than originals, which is fine. It's part of my job. So it's, uh, and then they did add some songs. I won't go into spoilers as to what they were, what they were about, and who sang them. Uh, but I will say one of them I actually really enjoyed and thought it added a lot. One was awful, and I never want to hear it again. I will fast forward through it every single time I watch this movie. I could not stand it. And then um, the other one was Zay. I was like, it had some nice moments, but overall, I almost forgot about the song when he ended the movie. ATM, thank you. Uh, being part of Belgium, I'm glad that uh, Philippe from Beauty and the Beast breed is Belgian. How could a bird breathe and talk underwater? Never explained. So, what? Uh, I, I know everyone was really freaking out about that, and that's a big point. If you know animal uh, anatomy a little bit more, uh, she is no longer a seagull. Scuttle. Scuttle is now a gannet. And gannets do dive under the water. And they stay under there for quite a bit of time. At, uh, quite, a, quite a bit at one time. So that's actually not out of the question. And the question is, is she actually breathing? No. She's holding her breath. But she's actually talking. Because, you know, when you're talking, you're kind of holding your breath. Granted, you have to take a breath after that, but then again, we're talking about animals. There is some level of suspension of disbelief, you know. But these types of birds, the, the gannets, they do dive underwater for long periods of time, and they spend a lot of time down there. It's not like they dive under, grab something, and come up. They're not like people. They stay under there longer. So, there is definitely... Oh, there you go. Interesting fact. There's the fun fact I was supposed to do earlier. It's about the Guinness. <laughs> so it actually does make sense from that regard. Granted, yeah, the breathing, no. They obviously aren't breathing water. But she can't be down there all the time. Um, oh, we have another fun fact. Um, another fun fact is uh, a lot of, uh, since we're drawing a Styracosaurus, Ceratopsians, much like the Styracosaurus, as you know, they have this lovely frill on the back of their head. And even though for a long time it was thought to have been a level of defense, a lot of paleontologists now believe a big part of it was for mating. And that um, it would be a show of display, like the bigger your frill was or the more colorful, the more likely you were to get um, a mate. Now granted, I'm sure it didn't help, it didn't hurt with defense either, but I don't think that was its primary, or at least, from what I understand, the paleontologists are saying that wasn't its primary function. It was more like a secondary function. First one being more for mating. I'm going to bring a little bit of realism into the feet. Instead of like an elephant foot, this is going to be more like what they think Ceratopsians would have been. It would be these... Uh, kind of splayed out toes. Even then, that's not really right. I'll have to play around with it. Um, but yeah. Nah. Okay, fine, we'll do it that way. Okay. do it this way yeah I'd have to double check just like how the anatomy of the foot works it's a little interesting um oh dang it it's been a while huh I think there's a little bit of padding in the back of the foot if I remember correctly and yeah there's this uh I think that's how it works 
Eh, it's stylized. We don't have to go too realistic with it. I might go back to an elephant-like foot. <laughs> but like, we'll, we'll 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 play around and make it a little bit more accurate. We'll put the two together. We'll find a nice hybrid between the two. It's elephant-like and not at the same time. So it's like the, the toenails will kind of poke out outside of the foot more. Yeah, that works. That works. I'm happy with that. <laughs> in, uh, Entertainment TV, thank you. Good evening from Atlanta. Just had a great start at MomoCon. Nice. Got to meet Gray Delisle and discover Caleb Hiles has an ex uh, exhibitor booth there. <gasps> Caleb is there? Oh my gosh, tell him I said hi. Tell him I said hi. I have not talked to Caleb in so long. He's such a cool guy. I love Caleb. Caleb is cool. If we lived in the same state, we'd probably hang out all the time. Ooh, we get a nice stretch break. Stretch break. Ah. Oh. Designed Jimmy, right? So every time you see Jimmy, I drew him. Well, not every time. Anytime you see him on this channel or any of the official merchant stuff, I drew him. Now, granted, the guy who I got to design it did add a little bit, like uh, like here on the water bottle, the Stay Awesome. It's my drawing, but he did add the shadows and a little bit of the highlights and stuff. I did everything else. So, yeah. What is my favorite and least favorite live action Disney remake? That is a that is a very topical question. My favorite, I think, would probably have to be the Jungle Book. I think it was the most deserving to exist. I think it did the most to, you know, further material in something that, you know, Walt Disney was famous for saying, "Don't read the book. I want to do my own thing with it." And then this one's like, well, let's take his ideas, but incorporate more of the book and create this nice hybrid. And, you know, it has its it has its issues. I'm not for one second going to say it's better than the animated one. Not by a long shot. But in my opinion, it earned its right to exist like it did enough to do that. It is still not as good as the animated one, but I don't hate it. And I think there's a lot to love in the new one. Uh, in the remake of it. Yeah, I know I was all articulate with like how the leg works back here, but I feel like he'd have a little bit of a tummy and that's going to block off some of the uh, detail. So we'll take that off. Um, now, when it comes to my least favorite, I'm my gut reaction is to say Pinocchio. But I don't know if I'd say that because I legitimately think it's the worst or it's the one that makes me the most upset or it's just the most recent. It's the one that it's the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Like I was never in love with the live action remakes. I also never hated them either. I'm like, you know what? It's a dumb fad, but it's going to die out pretty soon. And, you know, it, they're not going to go through every Disney movie. And then I was sorely mistaken. And I'm like, OK, I'm so done. Please stop. We, we don't need any more of this. Please, no. Um, and Pinocchio was the one where I'm just like, I'm done. I'm done. All the other ones, I can at least find something of value. I can at least find something that I really liked. And Pinocchio, I was like, no. No, I didn't like anything. And how can you make me dislike my favorite actor that much? Well, I didn't dislike Tom Hanks. But I can always say that I, I at least like Tom Hanks. But in this one, I'm like, no, I can't. Y'all y'all have no idea how to treat Tom Hanks in this. Come on, what are you doing? I really couldn't stand Pinocchio. So I yeah, I'd probably say Pinocchio. 
My only other option, I think, would be... Um, I don't know the other one. I, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with. Uh, I'm gonna stick with Pinocchio. I can't think of any I dislike as much as Pinocchio, so that's what we're gonna go with. Yay! The outline of my st uh, Stratosaurus is done. I almost called him a Stegosaurus. I'm gonna fix a little bit of this eyebrow over here. No! No. I need my, I need my glove. Uh, Mr. Art Rules, thank you. Kane Brown is coming to San Diego September 9th. Nice. I have never seen him in concert. I do love his music, though. I do love his music. I need... I need my glove. My draw, my digital art glove. Because I'm tired of... What happens is I, like, put... My, I rest my arm, my hand, on the iPad because it's easier to draw with. And then, uh... I click something. Um, thank you, Miss Art Rules. Let me spin the wheel for you. And I think someone else did a super chat, and I missed it a second ago. Uh, ooh, voice of my choice. Um, voice of my choice. Who do I want? Well, since we're doing the Little Mermaid, I would rather do the original Scuttle. Do a little bit of Buddy Hackett human stuff, huh? Well, let me see. This is a Dingle Hopper. Okay, uh, Logan, thank you. Would you want to see a live-action Tarzan? I don't want to see a live-action of anything else unless it is Gargoyles or a bad movie that Disney Animation released that they could possibly turn around and redeem. Or, like, not... Okay, when I say bad one, I mean one that did not turn over a great profit. Like Atlantis, Treasure Planet... Um, and I'm not saying these are bad movies necessarily. I'm just saying they performed poorly. Ooh, Hydrate. Thank you. Other than that, I don't want to see any live action remakes. Other than that, and Gargoyles. Shugworth, what's your favorite thing about your audience? My favorite thing about my audience is just how ready y'all are to just chill and hang. Just, I love that. So many people are just like, well, if you're not doing everything I want to the nth degree, I'm gone. But you guys are like, you know. Y'all want to sit and hang. So, I appreciate that. I was going to make him orange, but, you know, I'm kind of... I'm thinking of purple. Thank you, Shugworth. That was a good question. If a live-action Tangled happened, I know who jinxed it. You. I hope not. I don't I don't want a live-action anything else. I really don't. Um, I know we're getting a live-action Moana, and that makes me sad. But, you know, that's life, I guess. That's life. All right, I'm going to go with this purple. Uh, what are we doing on time? Okay, it's not horrible. I'm going to hope that maybe we can add some shading and stuff to him today. I know we couldn't do that last time. Last time we had our axolotl, which we had fun with, and we got pretty, and we got a nice drawing of, but... Yeah, I, I like the purple. We don't know what color dinosaurs were. Well, a Storacosaurus could have been purple. <laughs> I'm highly doubtful, but you never know. You never know. But like I said, I'm highly doubtful. This is not me in any way, shape, or form claiming I think that they were purple. I have no idea. I just think a purple Storacosaurus is fun. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, let's uh, let's get it a hair bit smaller. Yeah. Yeah. So we can get into these uh, nooks and crannies a little bit better. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm hoping we can add some shading and highlights to them. Which will be fun. Which will be fun. Go get Johan. 
Wow, Johan has not been spun. I don't think. I'm checking my, uh, I'm checking my, my, my sheet, and I don't see anything on there. So I don't know what mod is running that. <laughs> I hope I haven't missed anything. I don't think that I have. But just double checking. Um, Logan, thank you. Can I do Oaken, please? You watched Frozen last night. And you want to hear Brian do Oaken. Yee hee. Big summer blowout. Half of swimming suits, clogs, in the sun bomb of my own invention. Yeah? Oh, that would be an adventure department. The only one crazy enough to be out in this storm is you, dear. You and this fella. Hee hee. Big summer blowout. What did you call me? Bye bye. I'm so sorry about this violence. I will add a qu quart of Lutovitsk so we have good feelings. Just the cape and the boots, yeah? Brian, are you excited to be seeing Spider Man next month? Oh. <laughs> Especially everybody saying that it's even better than the first one. Everyone who's seen it is just like gushing over it. All the early viewers and the critics, and I'm like, oh man. Oh, I'm so ready for some more Spider Man. Oh, mama. I'm so excited my Johnny Bravo came out. <laughs> Wasn't your dragon you drew last purple? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm really finding that I like the color purple lately. It's like every time I'm like, well, what color do I want to make this purple? Why do I always want purple? I don't know. I've just been really enjoying the color purple lately. Before, it was always blue and orange. That's what I wanted to make everything. And now I want to make everything purple. I don't know. I don't know if the color you're currently obsessed with in art is telling about your mood or your personality or anything like that, but I have been in a purple mood for quite some time. I feel like Oaken and Johan would be good friends. There's a, there's probably a good reason you think that. Johan, Johan watched a lot of Frozen and such, got a lot of inspiration from it. <laughs> go Logan uh Alyssa B cat thank you if you have ever seen it Ra Raquin is a good game oh I'm not familiar with that game never even heard of it but I'll take your word for it Ooh, fun fact okay fun fact um let me think of something we're doing more we're still drawing a dinosaur so I want to find more dinosaur facts I should know. Oh my gosh. I need to go finish the new season of Prehistoric Planet 2. I watched the first episode and then I got distracted with other things and I haven't finished it yet because I loved the first episode. It was so good. And I was going to try to watch it every night, but then my second uh, Tuesday night, I had like a Bible study that I do. And then Wednesday, I got distracted. Last night, I got distracted. Oh, I went and saw the new Little Mermaid. And then. I think a lot of my spare time has also been Tears of the Kingdom because Tears of the Kingdom. Um, so I really want to go back and finish it. I would do one of those. I would do one of the facts I learned from that. But I haven't finished watching it. So I'm going to try to do that this weekend. Uh, you read that T-Rexes were discovered to have lips. Yes, that's, that's, that's a great fun fact. I'm going to steal that. I'm going to steal that. That is a thing. So, yes, it was discovered that Tyrannosaurus Rex did have lips. Now, before y'all start thinking, oh, my gosh, how nasty would that look? It's not as weird as you think. So whenever you think of the if you think about Jurassic Park, anything about that T-Rex, you normally think of uh, of the T-Rex when the mouth is closed. You can see the entire row of teeth on the top jaw, like when it closes the top teeth are exposed you know what i mean or like it's very similar to like an alligator when an alligator's mouth is closed the top row of teeth stick out the bottom row of teeth are inside the mouth the new study said no we've actually found impressions that would make them look like more lizard like as far as their mouth goes because when you see a lizard close their mouth you don't see any teeth at all because they have these little lizard lips that cover their teeth so you don't see them and they said we found enough evidence to prove that t-rex had that so they wouldn't have any teeth sticking out not from the top jaw not from the bottom jaw 
none of it. You just wouldn't see any teeth when the mouth was closed. You'd only see them when the mouth opened. So there we go. So yes, I, I'm sorry. I stole your fun fact. <laughs> I didn't know about that ahead of time, though. I could just uh, expand on it because it is it is really cool. That or I could have talked about the new uh, bone structure of, was it Baryonyx? Was it Baryonyx? No, 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 no. It was, um, it was Irritator. Irritator got a new, uh, that is a terrible name for a dinosaur. I'm sorry. Wh whoever thought of Irritator as a name for a dinosaur, I'm just like, what, what, what do you have against this? Was it a big irritant to you? <laughs> but yeah, no, Irritator had a change in its mouth structure. So now it actually like could open up they now realize it could open up the back of its mouth like a pelican does and have like kind of a pouch there well, i'm like well that's interesting you think the teeth uh being visible is cooler looking well if you're looking for a monster like creature yeah it definitely gives more credence to have teeth sticking out because it makes it scarier but if we're going by realistic it would have been close but you know I still love Jurassic Park no matter how no matter how paleontologically inaccurate it is which yeah it has a lot of issues but I will say this current Jurassic World Jurassic Park stuff yeah no it's got all kinds of problems and they know it in the original Jurassic Park yes there were some problems and they knew it but for the most part their entire idea of dinosaurs in general was actually pretty new and revolutionary and was uh and was fairly accurate at least how they're generally portrayed like that was the first time mainstream audiences saw dinosaurs as anything more than big lumbering stupid animals that like could barely function that was agile fast you know creatures much like today's modern mammals and that was a really huge turning point for dinosaurs in general so in that regard it was revolutionary and awesome for the paleontological community. But yeah, no, there was a lot of issues that they were straight up like, yeah, we know this isn't a velociraptor, but we're calling it anyway because it sounds cool. And then, of course, the Lophosaurus being the Lophosaurus. Everything about the Lophosaurus is wrong. Except for the little crests. Everything else is wrong. The start rules, thank you. Birds are dinos. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Birds are dinosaurs. And now we have a baby dinosaur. That's what I love to freak out my nieces with when they're just like, wow, we wish dinosaurs were alive today. I'm like, they are. And every time you eat chicken dinos, like chicken dinos, you're eating dinosaur meat. <laughs> Obviously, there's a little bit more to it than that, but it is still funny. It is still funny. Boop, 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 boop. And turkeys, well, turkeys are birds, so yeah, turkeys are definitely dinosaurs. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I thought about like separating the beak from the rest of the face, like color wise, but I was like, eh, nah, we'll keep it that way. Now, let's do a little bit of work on the eye and then we'll also do some yeah i think just a general pupil will be fine draw a little bit of accentuation for where the eyebrows would be um no, we'll do that a little bit no i liked it better before get rid of that get rid of that layers are amazing and i'm so glad that that's in things now Except for woolly mammoths, their descendants are elephants. Well, yeah, but woolly mammoths aren't dinosaurs. <laughs> They're mammals. So, yeah. Actually, elephants, I think, were supposed to be around before mammoths were. Or, no. No, mammoths were like a whole different species. But they did coexist with elephants. And then, uh, yeah, eventually the mammoths died out and the elephants did not. Oh, we got a bunch. Okay, Logan, thank you. Apparently, the Irritator got its name because paleont 
paleontologists found that the skull had been heavily damaged and altered by collectors. Ah, that would be an irritant. Okay, so that actually makes sense. Michelle, thank you. Uh, great job on the new video on the main channel. Can I get some Yoshi? Yoshi! Wow! Uh, and, oh, voice of your choice, Logan. What would you like? And then, uh, Carter, love, George. Thank you. I saw Jurassic Park at my local drive-in for my 20th birthday three years ago. What, uh, what are some perfect movies for the drive-in experience? Well, I would probably say Jurassic Park being one of them. Um, I don't know. I've never really done a drive-in movie, so I, I know that they are, there are some places where they could still be very popular. I'm just really not familiar with them, uh, or, or where they would be. I, oh, I would obviously say Jurassic Park, and I'd probably obviously say Lion King because obvious. <laughs> um, so let's say the light, we're saying the light's going to come in from this angle. So that means we need some highlights here. Put a lot on the face. But yeah, not here. We'll put a little bit of shadow underneath this eyebrow. Yeah, so that means your frill is going to be primarily a highlight, especially here. You'll be getting most of the sunlight because of the curvature of the frill. Yeah, this whole thing will probably end up being this lighter purple. I think. I'm not an expert when it comes to highlighting and shading, but I try, which you know is better than nothing, right? Yeah, I'd probably say there'd be more here. I think there, yeah, I think probably the most of the frill would be, I think once you start getting to this side, it would kind of dip off. Because this is partially how the artist can communicate the three dimensions that they're seeing in their head. It's like, yeah, I would leave a little bit of shadow in that eye because I think there's a eye socket divot. And then, yeah, do that up there. Yeah. But we'll keep some underneath the eye for that eye mask. So yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. So yeah, any artists out there who are just like, wow, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, well, sorry, I didn't go to school for this or nothing. This is just me having fun. Um, yeah, no, actually, I don't think there would be any under the nostril. I think this is probably right about the time it would start petering out. Um, but I don't, I like, it's okay on the top of the frill. Maybe just a little bit more like that. Sorry, I'm trying to explain what I'm doing as I'm going for people who are, like, genuinely curious. Um, ah! Didn't mean to do that. I was trying to turn my whole thing. Yeah, I don't like how it just stops on the face like that. Um... Oh, you want the Duke of Wesselton? I am the Duke of Wesselton. Wesselton, actually. As your closest partner in trade, I would like to off offer you my hand in a dance. Oh, lucky you. Like a chicken with the face of a monkey, I fly. Um, so let me see here. Actually, you know what? I think I probably would do some underneath the nostril. Because I, I, I actually, sorry, I'm really thinking about this, y'all. I'm really trying to think about this. I know that, actually, let's finish off with the face. I'm going to go move to the rest of the body. And that might help me kind of get my bearings. So there definitely needs to be some highlighting. Shading, I can understand much better than highlighting. So, yeah, there would definitely be some highlights here but it wouldn't be quite as straight of a line we gotta draw some realism in there okay and then 
Um, most of the body would be covered by the shade of the head and the frill, but there would definitely be some, especially the further you get away from the frill. I think probably most of this foot would be in light. And then as we go up, it would be less and less. Yeah, and kind of same thing back here, except less so because you know, you're dealing with the shadow of the entire body going in that direction, I think. Because that's the thing. It's like the, the head is going to create so much shadow on the rest of the body. I think. Thank you, Miss Art Rules. Lighting only to the middle of the horn. Well, it's like the light is coming from that direction, but it's like more like three quarters on his face. Otherwise, yeah, I would only do it to the center of the horn. But it's almost like the direction that his head is facing is like almost facing directly towards the light. So actually, yeah, now that I say that out loud, I think there'd be most of the head would be in the light. And just a little bit wouldn't. ATM, thank you. You'd make a great Barney in the reboot. According to that fan site, I would be. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, then there really wouldn't be much of a mask for the eyes. Because, yeah, his most of his face would be in the light. So, we'll do that. The bottom jaw would most certainly be in shadow. So we would leave that to say we probably need to do a little bit shadow around there. Yeah. Okay, that that's that's starting to feel a lot better. Abigail, thank you. Sorry, Brian, about the spreadsheet. Caitlin and Kayla aren't here today, so it's me, Christian, and Didi who are today. And shout out to Kayla, please. Absolutely. Hello, Kayla. No worries. I mean, luckily, so far, we haven't really had a lot of spins today that required me going back to look at things. So, eh, we're all right. Hmm. Yeah, if we're doing it that way, I feel like we'd be primarily in sun for the head. And then, yeah, a big portion of the back end would there would be, the cheek would be in sun. Underneath here would not be. Okay. Okay. And then, but yeah, then that would mean we would have more sunlight on the rest of the body because the shadow would be like directly behind. So we could do that. I think, yeah. The neck would be primarily in shadow, but then a good chunk of the body would be in sun. I think. I am confusing myself. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, Abigail. Yeah, let me spin for you. All right. Ooh, another stretch break. Let's do a stretch break as I try to think about how lighting works. <laughs> as I try to think about how lighting works. You know what? I may just make it easy on myself. I should, sh I should shade first and then try to do the highlighting because I get shading more than I get highlighting. And I can at least say, hey, everywhere opposite of where there's shadow, I should do that. Frank Carter and Michelle need Spins. You do? Well, Michelle, Michelle asked for Yoshi, so that was Michelle's. Uh, but yes, I do need to do one for Carter. Here's Carter's wheel spin. Oh, voice of my choice. Um, uh, let's see. I could do some Bowser from Mario. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Let's see. You know what? 
I'm done with trying to make the highlighting. I'll go in and do shading first. <laughs> the highlighting was not working. It was being a pain. Or maybe I just chose too advanced of an angle of the sun for myself. Because as much as I'm like, yeah, I, I'm not a bad artist. I ain't no expert either. Like I said, I didn't go to school for it or nothing. I just do it because it's fun. So yeah, I'll start with shadows and then try to do some highlights from there. If we have time, I know we're, we got like four minutes left. We definitely probably don't have time for me to have done all this, but hey, we shall see. Oh, Miss Art Rose, thank you. Brian, do you want an art class? Not really. And the reason why is like, I don't, you know, this is just something I do for fun. I don't really want something too crazy. Uh, oh, scene mode. We'll do that in a little bit. Um, not really. The most I would do is like maybe just do some online stuff. Like I do. I have taken a few classes. Or taken a few classes. I watched a few things from Aaron Blaze, the creature art teacher. If y'all don't know him and this is stuff that interests you, especially if you want to draw, you know, animals and creatures and stuff like that especially from a, in a realistic kind of way or just understanding the mechanics of the animal better he's amazing and y'all should definitely go uh yeah i think i'm just going to change the angle of the sun i think it's just going to go straight down make life easy on myself um yeah but yeah if that's something that interests you definitely go check out aaron blaze creature art teacher he uh, is amazing at that and i have i have gotten a few of his courses he does some amazing stuff and i've learned a lot from watching him i think that's probably about the extent i do i don't think i'd go like you know go to school or like find a class near me and like physically go there yeah that's i like that better let's just stick with what i know right now um yeah and aaron blaze was also the director of brother bear from Disney he worked on the Lion King he worked on Beauty and the Beast this dude knows what he's doing uh, he worked on Aladdin I'm trying to think of something else he's other things he's worked on I think he did some work on Tarzan I think he did some of the elephants oh no wait Tom Tom Bancroft did some elephants I think Aaron Blaze came on and did some I know it wasn't like his main thing but I think he came on and helped when they were in a in a bind but yeah, I know he worked at Disney for a long time. He was uh, incredible stuff. Yeah, so if wildlife specifically is what you love to draw, creature art teacher. I can't say enough good things about him. And he does live streams on YouTube all the time. And you can see him do live drawings too. And they're not these like super dinky, cheesy <laughs> cartoon characters like I do. You get like full-scale works of art done in front of your eyes and it's incredible and he uses a lot of different programs he has a whole thing on procreate specifically like how to do all these different things in there and i bought them i need to sit down and watch them and learn that was one of the things like during covid lockdown like i bought a bunch and i'm like i'm gonna go learn these all and i learned from a couple and then i just you know one thing led to another, and I kind of wasn't doing them much anymore. Not because they were bad or anything, just because, you know, ADHD brain got all, you know, ADHD brain. ADHD brain gonna ADHD. Okay, I like that a lot better. I like that a lot better. And then now I can work on some highlights. So now I changed it. Now the light's just going to be coming straight down from the top make life easy on myself thank you kelly for becoming a member so yeah let's just uh for resubscribing i don't know if you're resubscribing or becoming a member it's not telling me today which is annoying normally it tells me it's a oh it's definitely a more muted highlight than before 
Oh, no sing mode? Oh, I almost forgot. Like I said, ADHD brain gonna ADHD. We just did it again. So here we go. Sing mode. Now I gotta sing. I gotta sing. I gotta sing everything I say. Just like that goat from Hoodwink the Goat. From Hoodwink the Goat. From Hoodwink. From Hoodwink, yeah. From Hoodwink, yeah. From Hoodwink. Yeah. Cause that's fun. Because it's fun. And then I'll put a little light here on the shoulder blade. The shoulder blade. The shoulder blade. And then we'll put some light up here. Whoops. I didn't mean. Come on, I need you to move like that. Move like that, yeah. Move like that. Move like that. Oh, no, 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 no. Do, 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 do. Thank you, Logan. You see a voice like Carl from Jimmy Neutron coming out of his dinosaur. Well, we could try. Hello, I am a Staracosaurus. And being a Staracosaurus is what I do. I don't know how to sing like Carl. I can do an impression better of him when I'm not singing. And there we go. We add a nice little highlight to his cheek there. That's much better. That's much better. I am much happier with that. It is much better. It is much better. Now let's add some shadow of the horn, of the horn. I don't know the best way to do the shadow on the horn. I bet that's probably good. And then the same thing on the toenail claw things, yeah. Let's put a little bit at the bottom of each year. All right, I think he's done. Apparently, the computer thinks he is too. Okay, cool. It disappeared. Okay, everyone, hi. This is um, Scotty the Stracosaurus. I wanted to say hello. Hope you're all having a lovely day. Miss Star Rules, thank you. Sing a Chris Stapleton song. Um, why well, can't I think I'm trying to think of that one? Nobody to blame but me. I got nobody to blame but me. Don't know right where I went wrong. Got my life turned in this country song. And I got nobody to blame but me. I got nobody to blame but me. Whew. I have not really tried to sing much Chris Stapleton. He's good. Uh, M Entertainment TV, thank you. I know Aaron's work very well and know him personally. Oh, nice. If you're a member on his site, he does a members only stream twice a week. Oh, dang. Shoot. I, I give Aaron Blaze this. The man knows how to, like, make an online audience. The dude's good at it. Like, I, I didn't know much about Aaron Blaze until he started doing that. And I have, like, three of his art books now. I bought some of his classes. The dude is, the dude is awesome. The dude is awesome. I don't know him personally, but the dude is awesome. Here, I spin the wheel for you. Uh, oh, it's another sing mode. Here, we don't have time for another sing mode, so I'll spin it to something else. 
But I'm pretty happy with our Staragosaurus. He's a fun little guy. Voice filter. Um, technically... Eh. We can still do a voice filter. We'll just... We won't do it for a full three minutes. We can totally do it. Who's Aaron Blaze? Oh, Aaron Blaze. Uh, I talked about it a second ago. He's the creature art teacher. He uh, was a former animator and director over at Disney. And now he has created his own like uh, online school for animation and art. And he calls himself the creature art teacher. He's fantastic. He has a YouTube channel. He's got a website. You should definitely go check him out. I love his stuff. He's great. Oh, you can watch over his shoulder, so to speak, as he makes Snow Bear. I've seen a lot of his Snow Bear stuff, and I'm excited to see that short done. He's been working on that forever. He did a watercolor workshop. Nice. I don't know why. I feel cool when I wear this glove. It's like, ha, 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 ha. I am so cool. Even though, really, it's just to make sure that, you know, I can draw on an iPad okay. <laughs> I still remember back in the day where I really wanted to be an animator. And I was just like, yeah, no, I definitely couldn't be an animator. I actually tried. During COVID, I don't know if I told you all this, during COVID, I actually attended an online animation school trying to learn that as like a second job. And yeah, I couldn't even get past, I think it was class three. I couldn't, I got through class one and then class two and then class three. I got so frustrated with my computer. I wanted to throw it out a window. I'm like, nope, nope, I'm done. I'm done. I'm so tired of this. Nope, nope. I appreciate animation. I would love to be on the back end, like helping drive creative ideas and being a voice for it. But no, I am not an animator in and of itself. Chugworth, thank you. Are you a fan of Dan Povenmire? Oh, the dude is awesome. I love Dan Povenmire. So cool. Uh, so M Entertainment TV, do we have a filter? Do we have a filter you want to do? Or do you want me to spend to something else that we can do? Maybe something a little faster, either just like a voice or something like that. Oh, you want the chipmunk? Okay. We can do chipmunk for a little bit. Hello! I am a chipmunk. <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. So, we're going to start wrapping it up here. Um, we went a little long, but not too long, which is good. Which is good. Um, Ryan, maybe you had a bad art teacher? Oh, you mean at the school, at the animation school? No! Um, it had nothing to do with the teacher. The thing I struggled with is I could draw what I wanted and um, I didn't I didn't go to school to learn 2D animation. I learned 3D. And the thing that made me want to throw my co computer out a window is that I could not get this 3D model to do what I wanted. And it was... <laughs> and they explained it fine. It was um, it was just this disconnect between i could draw it like so so the way the school worked was this you would get an assignment that you just have to put characters into poses we're not animating anything just put the cg character in a pose that was it you just had to put a cg character uh, put a cg character in a pose but before that you were supposed to on your own draw about 12 different poses like, they'd give you an emotion, like, depressed or something, or sad, or happy, or whatever. And you would draw about 12 different poses, like, that you could stylistically say, like, yeah, if I saw that, I would understand this emotion. You pick one of those drawings you did, and then translate that into a CG pose. I swear to you, I could draw it like that. 
And I'm like, yeah, I want it to look like that. And then I would do it, realizing it didn't match my drawing because of the limitations of the rigging on the model. But then it would be like, oh yeah, no, you need to push everything farther. You're not pushing it far enough and this and this and this. And I'm like, that's as far as it goes. So I thought, but then I look at all of my uh, classmates because they, they make it to where you can see all of your other classmates work. Not to like, you know, put you down, but to show, help you see what everyone else is doing so you can kind of learn from what they're doing and stuff like that. And you can talk with them. It's supposed to be a very open environment, which it was. But I saw what they were doing and they, they got their poses, they got their models to go so much farther than I could mine without breaking it, without like doing that. I'm like, what are y'all doing? They're like, yeah, we're just doing it. I'm like, what weird disconnect can I not do? I couldn't understand it. And then I did do some animation and I thought it was fine. Uh, like by the time I got to the end of it, I was like, okay, I did it. It was a pain in the neck and there were so many technical and mathematical issues and it was dumb and I was so upset. But I was like, I got it done. I got a good grade on it. But then the next class came and I'm just like, I don't have it in me anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You always wore gloves on the drawing streams. No, this is actually the first time I've pulled one out. I think I think I may have done one um, earlier when we were on Twitch. Thought the filter was still on. No, I was going to give it for a little bit of time before the stream ended since I just ended. Would I say 2D is easier? 2D is easier for me. I wouldn't say in general, but it is easier for me because I understand how to draw better than I understand how to manipulate a CG puppet. I would say for general people, 3D is probably actually easier than 2D, but that doesn't mean it's easy. So that's it. Um, so that's it. Brian filter still on. I know, I know. I didn't have, I didn't set a timer because honestly I didn't think we were gonna have this long of a conversation before we ended. Um, do realism? Eh, I used to do a lot of realism, but I'm I'm just really bored with it now. To be totally honest, I used to try to do a lot of realism when I was younger, but it's just not. I don't I don't get excited about that anymore. I prefer cartooning now. I I used to do a lot of that, but eh, I just find it boring now. Um. It's just, it doesn't speak to me like it used to. Um, but yeah. Um, but that's where we're going to wrap it up today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out on the stream today. Uh, next week, let me double check my schedule, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be another Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Pretty easy, nothing crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Normal week, next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have Super Mario Galaxy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we will do that. And hope you guys have an amazing weekend. And I will see you guys on Monday. Bye.